This is Tyler from Nelly Security, and in today's video, we are going to unbox these two Uniview Fisheye security cameras. Uniview's fisheye cameras come in two different resolutions. We have the 5 megapixel model and the 12 megapixel 4K model. There are a few differences between these two models, which we will talk about in this video, but for the most part they do have very similar specs. There's a lot to learn about these cameras, so let's go ahead and jump right in with an unboxing. So right away, just from looking at the boxes, you can tell that there is a considerable size difference between these two cameras. The 5 megapixel version is clearly a lot smaller than the 12 megapixel version. So the first thing we see when we open up this camera is this little baggie. This contains our drill template and paperwork such as our quick start guide and our waterproof guide. We also have this weatherproof grommet, our mounting hardware, and then we have the camera itself and our 12 megapixel model is very similar. We have our paperwork here, and then we have our camera, and underneath we do have our weatherproof grommet and mounting hardware. So here we have our two cameras side by side, and we can really see the size difference now. I mean, they are both pretty small, they both fit pretty nicely in the palm of my hand, but the five megapixel version here is clearly a lot smaller than the 12 megapixel version. So both cameras do have this 360 degree lens here in the front, surrounded by this black IR glass. They both have this plastic ring around the camera. The 12 megapixel camera has a, a larger ring, but these are just covers. The cameras themselves do have a durable all metal construction. It's just this outer cover that is plastic. If we look a little closer, we can immediately see a couple of other differences between these two cameras. We do have a built-in microphone here on the 5 megapixel version, but on this 12 megapixel version, we actually have three microphone holes. It's going to give it a larger omnidirectional field, whereas this 5 megapixel camera, even though it does have an omnidirectional microphone in it, it's going to be a lot smaller, and it's probably not going to pick up audio quite as well. We will test that here in a little bit. I'm actually going to bench test these two cameras. We'll take a listen to both cameras and see if those three microphones really do make a difference when it comes to audio quality. Another noticeable difference between these two cameras is this built-in speaker here. So you can do two-way audio straight out of the box with the 12 megapixel fisheye. By default, you can only do one-way audio with the five megapixel. However, you can connect this to an external speaker which brings us to the cables. Both cameras have nearly identical cables in their pigtails. However, you can tell that the 5 megapixel version does have two separate pigtails, whereas the 12 megapixel version has all of the cables contained in that one pigtail. So both cameras do have this standard RJ45 ethernet connection, as well as a 12 volt DC power connection. Additional cables include a BNC video out connection for a spot monitor, alarm connections for connecting this to an external alarm. And both cameras also have audio in and out connections. The obvious difference being the five megapixel version only has these wires and you have to wire the microphone or speaker in yourself. Whereas the 12 megapixel version actually has these female connectors so that you don't actually have to wire the audio hardware yourself. One connection that is available on the 12 megapixel model but not on the five megapixel model is this RS485 connection for connecting this to a remote control for the PTZ views. All right, let's go ahead and take the covers off of these cameras and take a look underneath. The covers are super easy to remove. On the five megapixel version, you have this lock and open symbol on the side. So you simply rotate it and the cover pops right off. On the inside, you can see that we have our installation holes for screwing our camera into place. You can also see the single omnidirectional microphone a little bit better. And we also have this little compartment here, which contains a micro SD card slot, as well as a reset button. These cameras can hold more internal memory than most other cameras, uh, with a limit of 256 gigabyte micro SD card. Then to replace this plastic ring, you just click it back into place and you're good to go. For the 12 megapixel version, instead of twisting the cover, you simply push in on this little button and the cover just slides right off. 
Again, we have a better view of the microphones under here and they are labeled one, two, and three. And just like the five megapixel version, we do have our compartment here for the micro SD card slot, as well as the reset button. I will point out that since these are just standard Phillips head screws and you don't need a special hex key or anything like that, and since the covers come off so easily, I would recommend installing these cameras in a place that is out of reach. And that's it for the unboxing. I'm gonna go ahead and get our test bench set up and we can take a closer look at some of these features. I now have these cameras pulled up here on the web interface. They are set up at our test bench in our warehouse. So I'm not gonna walk you through all the features of this camera. We will go into more depth in the next video when I show you a live installation. For now, I just wanna test out a couple of the features. Uh, particularly take a look at these different viewing methods as well as checking out the audio functions. So we have our five megapixel version and here we have our 12 megapixel version and they both have very similar uh, functions and viewing methods. Although for the 12 megapixel version, this is split up into two separate screens. Whereas in the five megapixel version, it's all right here in one screen. We can change the mount type from ceiling to wall to table. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is set up on a table. It's not really going to do anything to affect the image, but it will change how these different views behave. And I'm gonna do the same thing here in my uh, 12 megapixel fisheye. And you can see here, I can change it from fisheye to 360 panoramic view. So this is gonna give me the full panoramic view down here at the bottom with a de-warped version here on top and I can click up here and drag my mouse around to move the camera, or I can click on this area and drag it around the panoramic view as well, and it has the same effect. I can also do a 180 degree panoramic view, which is going to split that view up into two and show me both sides at the same time. And here I can click and drag around if I need to. We have a three split PTZ screen, and again, I can click inside the individual views to move that view around, uh, or I can click and drag on this fisheye view to achieve the same effect. I can also use my mouse wheel to zoom in. And you can see as I do, that uh, screen gets larger and smaller on the fisheye. I can also have a four split PTZ view, a six split PTZ view with the panoramic view, or an eight split PTZ view. Now, none of this is actually changing the way that the camera is operating because this is simply the preview mode. Again, we'll look more into this in the next video because we will connect this to an NVR. That's where this display mode comes into play. One difference I do wanna point out between the 12 megapixel and the uh, five megapixel cameras is in this intelligent event menu. With our 12 megapixel camera, we do have access to this heat map as well as line crossing and intrusion detection. So we can set up some recording events there. With the five megapixel version, if I head into the intelligent event menu, you can see that we only have heat map. We do not have line crossing or intrusion detection. So if we want any kind of recording events, uh, we are going to be limited to this basic motion detection as well as audio detection and just these uh, basic events. And again, we will look more at this heat map in the next video. But for now, let's head into video and audio and we will click audio and I just wanna see what these cameras are set to by default. So we have an input gain of 128, noise suppression is off. So here's our five megapixel version with the one singular omnidirectional microphone. Let's see what this sounds like. So it's pretty loud. There's definitely a lot of background noise. Um, there wasn't really anything happening close to the camera. So I'll have to go out there in a second and speak into it. But for now, let's change some of these settings because that was pretty loud. I might wanna turn this down to maybe 90 and turn on noise suppression. Let's head into our 12 megapixel camera and see what this sounds like. And again, this does have those three uh, omnidirectional microphones instead of the one singular. All right, now that immediately sounds much better. We can actually distinguish some of the voices that are far off. Uh, we still can't really make out what they're saying, but it's not nearly as harsh and loud of a sound. The background noise is not nearly as invasive. Uh, I might still wanna turn off 
turn on noise suppression just to see what that does to the audio. Yeah, now there's virtually no background noise at all. So I would say those three microphones do make quite a bit of difference when it comes to audio quality. This 12 megapixel camera is much clearer, at least when it comes to uh, distant audio. Now I'm gonna go out there and speak directly into these microphones and see what it sounds like close up. All right, this is the five megapixel camera with the one singular microphone. I'm testing the audio, and now I will go switch over to the 12 megapixel camera and we'll see what that one sounds like. And I'm now speaking into the 12 megapixel fisheye camera with the three omnidirectional microphone. And we'll now go see if this makes the audio any clearer. All right, yeah, this 12 megapixel camera with the three microphones is clearly at much higher quality in audio than the five megapixel version. But at the end of the day, you know, even if you're not a fan of either of these microphones, both cameras, again, come with that uh, audio in and out connection, so you are able to connect your own external microphone to this if you need to. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot about these cameras. In our next video, I'm going to show you a live demo of one of these cameras. We're going to take the 12 megapixel version here and install it in our warehouse. We will dive a little deeper into some of these features, test out the heat map, and we're going to connect it to an NVR for de-warping and for playback. If you want to be the first to know when that video goes live, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us across social media. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I will see you next time.